Welcome to a series that we call The End of Times, where we go through the book of Revelation verse by verse to try our best to see what it is we can expect to happen in the end times, or the times Jesus refers to as the end of the age. And as we've gone through Revelation verse by verse, where we are at is John had been taken up in the spirit to the throne room of God, where we're able to look around. He notices that God has a scroll in his hand with seven seals, and that scroll is the divine appointment of the coming of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And it's also determined that only Jesus is worthy to open that scroll. And as he opens the seven seals, what we see is events take place. And most of those caused by man. Now, horsemen and angels are helping that process go along, but it's still the evil hearts of men that are doing these things. But God is always in control throughout that entire time. It is his will. But then when he finally opens that scroll, what we see is now is the coming of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And the first thing that happens is there are seven angels with seven trumpets. And as they blast, the first one, hail and fire mingled with blood, hits a third of the earth. The second blast, something like a burning mountain or a meteor strikes the shore off the shore off the third of the earth and helps to continue the destruction of this third of the earth. And then the third blast and an angel falls uh, or it says a star burning like a lamp comes down and poisons the hearts of men. And then finally the fourth blast blasts and the sun is blocked out. Now this third is Babylon. What we're seeing is the destruction of Babylon and it takes place really quickly. And now we're at chapter 8 verse 13. And this is just following that fourth blast and the sun being blocked out. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound, exclamation point. Now, there's a lot going on in this moment. I just want to kind of take some time and decipher what it is that's happening in this verse. Now, first off, where it says that he saw an angel, the word there is etau, and it's Greek for an eagle. I don't know why they put the word angel in there. My Bible actually gives a subscript that it does mean eagle, but there, an eagle is saying these things, not an angel. And there are three woes. There's three blasts left. Now, um, he says, woe, 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 three times. And there are three woes coming, and it's not good. Now, up until this point, the first four trumpets hammered and destroyed a third of the earth, a.k.a. Babylon. But the rest of the earth is just sitting there looking at it, from afar and it's interesting because we can kind of see what they think as they look from afar if we jump to Revelation 18 9 it says and the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxurious with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning standing at a distance for fear of her torment saying alas alas the great city Babylon the mighty city for in one hour your judgment has come and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. So what we get out of this is, one, those first four blasts happen within one hour. Um, and really, everybody's just kind of standing off, looking at the other, the other two-thirds of the earth is standing off, looking at the one-third of the earth getting destroyed, saying, Oh no, who will buy our merchandise now that Babylon is destroyed? But now, at this point, the remaining three blasts is the whole earth. The first, floor, the first four where this is the destruction of Babylon, a third of the earth. These last three affect the entire planet. When the eagle says, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, the word he uses there for earth is jess, or the whole earth, or the whole globe. And it is not good what we're about to see happen. And a lot is going to take place in those final three blasts. We're, we're going to spend a lot of time on those last three blasts. Many, many chapters. 
But up until this point, just a reminder, trumpet one, hail and fire mingled with blood, a third of Babylon or a third of the earth, Babylon. Second, uh, blast, meteor, hits offshore. Third, wormwood poisons the hearts of men. Fourth, the sun blocked out. But don't let people fool you and think that Babylon is a city in the middle of Iraq that is uninhabited. It is a third of the earth. And when we get to that section on Babylon in the description, we'll talk about where that is. But these last three blasts, they take a long while. And as we look at these, we'll be introduced to certain people, the witnesses, uh, the woman and the dragon, the beast from the sea and the beast from the land. A lot's going to take place in these last three blasts, and it's not good because even the final blast is uh, essentially golden bowls of God's wrath being poured out onto the whole earth. But I also want to kind of answer the question, well, why whoa, like what does this mean? And, and of course you can find the word whoa all throughout the Bible. But if you look at a couple places specifically that were kind of like, what does this mean? Like woe to the earth. Like what, what's God getting at here? Well, if we look at Isaiah 33, 1. Woe to you who plunder, though you have not been plundered. And you who deal treacherously, though they have not dealt treachery, treacherously with you, when you cease plundering, you will be plundered. And when you make an end of dealing treacherously, they will deal treacherously with you. And then we're going to jump to Nahum 3, 1. Woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. Its victim never departs. The noise of a whip and the noise of rattling wheels, of galloping horses, of clattering chariots, horsemen charged with bright swords and glittering spears. There's a multitude of slain, a great number of bodies, countless corpses. They stumble over the corpses because of the multitude of harlotries of the seductive harlot, the mistress of sorceries who sells nations through her harlotries and families through her sorceries. Behold, I'm against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will lift your skirts over your face. I will show the nation your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. I'll cast abominable filth upon you and make you vile and make you a spectacle. So up until this point, two thirds of the earth is just staring at it all getting destroyed, saying and looking in awe, wondering, who will we sell our garbage to now that Babylon is destroyed? But what this eagle is declaring, and again, this is in heaven. John's seeing this eagle in heaven declaring these things. So we won't see this eagle here on earth. But what it's declaring there in heaven is it's about to get really bad for the rest of the earth. So I hope this video helps uh, with some clarity on this, this verse, because again, up until this point, third of the earth is getting hammered on. Now, the whole earth or the whole globe is about to see the wrath of God. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support our channel through Patreon, that link is below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, Love guns.